And more to the point, the trains are heaving, because nobody's left London all day, right? So there's a train there that is full in a way I've only ever seen in documentaries in the third world. You know, <laughs> when there's like one train a year, and if they don't get on it, they don't feed their family. So they're on the roof, and they're in the coupling. That's happening at Waterloo Station. Grown adults hanging onto the outside of trains, <laughs> waiting for them to leave. And the police there saying, I'm afraid you can't travel like that, mate. Because you sober people, you'd say, oh, God, yeah, tunnels and that. Kill myself, will <laughs> What am I like? <laughs> Not piss people. You fuck off, pig. <laughs> I'm touching the train, I'm on the train. <laughs> you know if people are starting on the police, this is going to be a tetchy evening. <laughs> well, I ain't getting on that train, and I ain't getting home, right? And then I realise there's one left to be announced, right? And I think, if I don't get on that, I'm screwed, right? And I've, I've got a good chance, because I think when they announce the platform number, I'm the only one here who can still read. <laughs> so they call the train, and I get there. Not only do I get there, I get there first. I've got my choice of every seat on the entire train, which for a lot of people is a dilemma, because it's too much choice, isn't it? Not for me. I know exactly what seat I want, right? And I want the seat where it's two seats, but it's the one no one else wants, right? Because I want two seats to myself, but I'm too much of a coward to put my bag on the one next to me, because, you know, eventually someone will come along and go, uh, could you move your bag, please? Yes, thank you very much, yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to get this one, and I'm here now, aren't I? Yeah, look at that. I'm just going to touch you as well with that leg. So. <laughs> because I am the... Uh, hey, that's my armrest. That's my... <laughs> that shitty half a one under the window there. I'm the alpha. Right, so we just pick the shitty seats. And what that is, right, you walk along the train until you see where they've joined two trains together, but there's no divider. So everyone who's in this bit can't get through to that bit. Half's your audience, right? Step on here, don't carry on with the momentum, just turn around, and there's a little pouch of seats here that nobody notices, right? Look for the table here, don't sit at the table. Everybody wants the table. You sit just behind the table, right? Nobody sees these seats, because they see the table's full, they move on. Sit here on these seats, face backwards. Most people don't like to face backwards, it makes them feel sick. Sit by the window, so people walking this way think there's someone there as well. Go on, piss off. Ah. <laughs> get to my seat and I tuck myself into my little ball of self-righteousness and I think, right, we're going to be all right, we're going to get home. And then the train fills up around me, people on the table, someone sits next to me. Just before we pull out of the station, there's the unmistakable sound of something hitting the back of my chair, which is definitely a human head. I can tell by the sound of it. I think it's either someone who's passed out, or more excitingly, someone who's running for the last train and thinks, shit, I'm going to miss the last train. Maybe if I cut my head off and throw it on the train... <laughs> I can get my head home, roll back to the flat, and call a taxi to get my body. <laughs> no one's ever thought of that. I'm a genius. It isn't. It's just a girl behind me who's passed out. Her body's not having it, right? And then I, I sort of want to know how she's got on the train, but I can't turn around because I'll make eye contact with someone and they'll think I want to talk to them. So I go, oh, you've got a face, have you? I've got a face, mate. I was born in Bermondsey. Oh, f***, jeez. <laughs> keep talking. I find out what happened, right? Because what's happened is a man has carried this lady onto the train, a South African businessman, right, has carried the woman onto the train. And all he needs to do there, he's got to go and get another train, right? So he's not with her. So he needs to just tap these two people here and just say, excuse me, uh, could you help this woman off the train at New Malden, please? I don't know if you can see, but she's absolutely fucked. <laughs> I'm not actually going to stay and help. She's your responsibility now. OK, take care. Cheerio now. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's all he's got to do, but he spots an opportunity here where he thinks, hang on, if I announce to the whole carriage that I've carried this lady onto the train, they'll all think I'm a gentleman hero, right? So instead of doing that, he shouts to all of us, Somebody's got to help this woman off the train, please! <laughs> I've carried her as far as I can, but I can do no more, what a world, what a world! <laughs> and he's the first individual I take time out to hate. <laughs> Two reasons I hate him. First of all, if this girl is that drunk, you're not helping her, are you, by putting her on a train? If she's that drunk, she's better off on the platform with the police or back with her friends than she is hurtling towards Portsmouth at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> so, no offence to Portsmouth, but let's be honest, anyone in this room, if you woke up tomorrow and found you were in Portsmouth, your first thought wouldn't be, well, what a wonderful opportunity to explore the historic town of Portsmouth. <laughs> you think, oh, shit, I'm in Portsmouth. <laughs> I don't live in Portsmouth. Right. Second of all, if we trace back why this girl is that drunk, it's probably because an hour ago he was in a bar with her and he liked her, but he knew his personality was abhorrent, so what he did is every time she asked for a drink, he got her a larger one, right, and she got drunk and they came out and the air hit her, and instead of doing the gentlemanly thing, what he did is he thought, oh, I better put this one on the train, I fucking broke it. <laughs> he's not a hero, is he? He's just a piece of shit. 
dumping a girl on her own on a train, right? But then these two, they bail him out because they went, oh, that's okay, we'll get her off the train, right? And I hated them as well. <laughs> just for bailing, and just because all that's happened is they're pissed as well, but because she's more pissed, they now feel sober and responsible. Oh, is she drunk? Oh, we'll deal with this. You see, we only had the 12 Jaeger bombs, so. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll take care of her. Mind there, I pissed there a little bit, okay. <laughs> And here's, here's why I say I'm better at hate than anyone else, right? Because at the same time as I'm hating them for getting involved, I'm also hating everyone else for not getting involved, right? It doesn't have to be consistent, my hate. And we sat there going, there's a woman in distress here, and you people did nothing. This country's gone to their fucking dogs. <laughs> Fire it. Oddly, at this point, the only person on the train I don't hate is her, because she's unconscious. She's behaving impeccably. <laughs> That's in quiet and still she is. Anyway, he gets off the train, they're helping her, I sort of start to calm down, the train goes, I think, it's, it's all being taken care of, John, it's not your responsibility. And about five minutes into the journey, there's a sound from behind me of sort of a semi-thick liquid hitting the floor. Oh. About four feet, and I think, she's never having a can of soup. <laughs> that's a bold snack on a train, that, isn't it? <laughs> Heinz Big Soup, I think, from the sound of that. Right. It's obviously not she's just been sick, right? She's puking on a train, which is the point at which she wakes up. Puking on a train she doesn't remember getting on, so she gets upset, she starts crying, and the crying causes her body to convulse, which makes her sick again. Right, so she's a perfect little sandwich of misery going on behind me. <laughs> <laughs> now, what that does is rocket her up the league to my most hated person on the train. <laughs> Remarkable form. Relegations onto Champions League, that is amazing. <laughs> the only reason I hate her is because all I wanted was this seat. I just wanted to get home, and now I'm going to have to move because sick is coming under the thing. <laughs> I've got my shoes and my bag, and now I really start to lose it. I just think, this is ridiculous now. You can't even get on a train anymore without getting somebody else's insides on you. <laughs> stomp out of the thing. I start looking around for people who are just going to look at me and go, oh, no, mate, what a bloody world, right? I look at everyone and I realise they're not sympathising, they're angry at me, right? Because they're as pissed as she is and they think I'm elevating myself out of this situation. They're looking at me going, oh, look at Mr. Fucking Clean Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lardy Zars, too good to have our sick all over him, is it? He was sick on me, mate. I didn't move. I just pissed on him a little bit. 